Hey, we're live. <laughs> hey, everyone. This is a uh, Wednesday night. It is the beginning of summer for us, and it is evident by my forehead here. I got a little bit too much sun <laughs> today, so I'm a little, a uh, little, little lobstery on the forehead, but it's all good. Hope you're doing well. Tonight, we're going to talk about breaking kitchen design rules. And some of these are trends, some of these are rules, and uh, I like to push the envelope a little bit with certain things, and in kitchen design, it's no different. And so some of these are rules or trends that maybe or maybe not are things that we can neglect or put to the side, or maybe they're still really important. We'll open up the conversation to everyone as uh, of you as, as well as we go on and you can have your input on what you think about these trends or rules that we will think about breaking or could break in the future. When it comes to anything kitchen design related, as long as the kitchen ends up being functional and usable for the end user, everything else is, you know, whatever in my opinion. So with that being said, all the rules can essentially be broken as long as they're not causing anything to be dangerous or something not to be up to code. But otherwise, we can kind of mix and match and do what we want. However, there are some things that when done a certain way, end up being a better result than if they weren't done. And so we're going to talk about some of those things in this live stream tonight. I hope you are having a great night. Um, and depending on where you're watching from, or wherever you're watching from, but de depending on the device that you're watching from, please uh, say hi in the chat, and we'll jump in there in a little while, and um, we'll get we'll get we'll get we'll get a chat. And so I see some people coming on already, and I just want to say hi to everyone who's jumping on. So really appreciate you being on right at the start of the live stream, and we're going to jump into it right away. But I did put a poll on. If you haven't seen it already, jump on the poll if you can and vote for where do you find the most inspiration for kitchen design? Where do you look at to, you know, get ideas or even if it's interior design, you know, whatever, uh, where do you find those ideas and, and where do you find the most, I mean, you probably would use all of these to find ideas, but, uh, it's what, what's the one you go to the most. So that's what's in the poll. You can check that out. Hey, Stephen from Montreal. Cool. Hey, thank you for being on tonight. Um, awesome to have a, Another fellow Canadian jumping on the live stream. Jackie's here. Hey, Jackie, it's always good to see you. And I see Stacy, Jeff, Terry, Joe, Pearl's kids. And um, and if you're watching and you didn't say hi in the chat because you can't or you're too shy, that's okay. But if you want to say hi, definitely do that. Um, always appreciate it. So we're going to jump into this. Tonight. I got some slides to show you because why not? And, um, and we'll go from there. All right. So let's do this and uh, we'll jump into it. So Breaking kitchen design rules. Now, the number one rule of kitchen design, I don't know if this is the number one rule. I'm, I'm saying this, you know, I'm making this up. <laughs> the number one rule of kitchen design, at least for a long time, is make sure your camera works for the live stream. There you go. Is that the kitchen triangle is, you know, very important. Something that we... Um, you know, we, we think about, we adhere to, we try to follow. And so the, the first one tonight, and let me just bring this up for us all to see, is the work triangle. So I've got a fancy glow triangle going there to depict what I'm talking about. But you've all heard of the kitchen triangle before, I'm sure. And uh, it's something that when we are designing a kitchen, we want the kitchen to operate effectively, functionally. You know, we want to be able to access everything. Carol, Car Carol Lewis, fr first time on. Thank you for being here. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being on. Um, we want the kitchen to be as functional as possible. And the work triangle has been this idea. It's more than an idea. It's really a proven concept to help us not take as many steps in a kitchen or to make the workflow of the space as, I don't know, ergonomic. I don't know if that's the right word, but as functional as possible. And the, But the question is, and the question has been, even the question that I've had over the last number of years is, is the kitchen triangle still important? Is it still something that we should, you know, absolutely, you know, abide by, you know, the, if you go to the NKBA uh, guidelines, it'll tell you, you know, all the distances for each part of the triangle and how much overall and how much is too small, and how much is too big. And so are these things that are still important and, or can we forget that rule? Can we break that rule and do something else? Now I have, I have two thoughts on the matter. One is, yes, we can break it. One is, no, we can't. So I'll explain both of those now. 
on the side of we should keep the kitchen triangle is that it actually just works. It's a, it's proven to work. It is definitely most effective if you have your kitchen laid off in such a way that your sink and your cooktop or range and your fridge are located in a proximity that's easy to navigate and not bump into things or bump into people or, or, or the three things that you use the most. So usually it's the sink and your fridge and it's going to probably be your cooktop. But as kitchens progressed over the years and in your kitchen, you can go there probably right now and figure out real quickly that, hey, I have more than three appliances. I have more than three places that I visit. I have a video in the past. I forget when I did it, but it's back there in the catalog somewhere. And I in that video, I'm talking about like groups of triangles within a kitchen. So there's not just one kitchen triangle. There's actually multiple groupings of triangles, you know, or areas workflows in a kitchen that tend to tend to work the best and so if you think of it that way you might have your sink and your range and your cooktop triangle and you might have a microwave sink triangle you might have a, a, a pantry to countertop to something else triangle like there's there's different workflows so the as important as the kitchen triangle is i think if we think about it in different ways it becomes even more of a necessity in the kitchen so it's definitely not something that we would uh, absolutely break but i think we've amended it enough times over the years that it becomes something different it's not necessarily a triangle anymore it might be some other shape but the key premise is that the things that we're using in the kitchen are accessible and you know we, we we're not stumbling around and trying to get to you know the things that we get to the most in the kitchen now this is important however it's completely up to the individual on whether or not they want to abide by these rules. The kitchen triangle is just a suggestion. It's not, you know, a rule. It's not the building code doesn't say you have to have a work triangle in your kitchen. The building code, there's no building code that cares, to be honest. So it doesn't matter. And there's a, a trend right now out there where fridges are, you know, somewhere else in, in a different room even. And I've done designs for clients uh, online here where the um, the fridge would be, you know, on another side of an island. So you have your, your sink and your range and your fridge is over here. And there's this great big island in the way that you have to go around every time to get to your fridge. Now, is that functional? Well, maybe not, but that's what the client wants. And the kitchen size is big enough to be able to do that. So it's, it's their choice. And if it's functional for the person, then that's good enough for me. Could have been a little bit different. Probably there's different ways to do all kinds of things. So there's more than one way to design a particular space, a particular kitchen. And the key ingredient is that as long as it's functional for the user, that's the most important thing. So is the work triangle still important? I'd say, yes, it's important, but in different ways than it used to be because the amount of appliances that we have, we have dishwashers now and microwaves are in there, all kinds of other things that possibly could be in your kitchen that you use all the time. And we want those things to be as easily accessible as possible so that we're not wasting steps in the kitchen. If you care about that, then that's the other thing. If that's if that matters to you, because if it doesn't matter to you, like what's the difference anyway? So they say like the, the triangle should be no more than like 158 inches of total walking distance, which is quite a bit of space. But if you don't care about that, like what's the difference? If you don't mind walking further to get to your fridge, then it doesn't really matter. So, so that's like, you know, two sides of the coin there. And I think it's still important, but it's up to the individual and in their kitchen, what they want to do. Tracy's saying we have 15 foot uh, on one wall, which is, which is functional except for dishwasher placement. So yeah, I mean, if you have a one wall kitchen, there's no triangle. It's just, it's, it's linear. You're just going back and forth like this. So, you know, all that stuff is depends on the on the layout but in a in a in a l shape or u shape or even a galley style kitchen having some kind of workflow is important but in a one wall kitchen it, the the idea of the triangle is that the overall distance is not too small not too big and so if you're on a 15 foot wall and you have a fridge on one side and your range is way over on the other side and you're walking back and forth all the time to that. That's kind of the idea that, well, you want to reduce the amount of steps. Again, if it really matters, because I don't really think it matters as much as 
it used to for some reason. I don't think we care as much about that. We care about it being functional. It looks good. It operates the way we want it to. And the triangle is going to be in there some way, shape or form. I mean, I, you almost can't get around it. You're probably going to have a work triangle, even if you don't try to have one, because you just have all these appliances. And normally when you design a kitchen, even if you've never designed a kitchen, you're not getting a designer, you're just going to do it yourself for the very first time. You probably wouldn't, if you had you know a big enough space, you probably wouldn't put your fridge and your range and your sink just boop, 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 next to each other. You'd probably design it out some way because you've looked on Instagram or Pinterest or Google or YouTube and looked at kitchen designs and said, okay, well, this is what I should do. And if you do that, you're probably going to have a work triangle. So I think the work triangle is definitely important and um, in, in, in new ways, of course, but even this, the old standard kitchen triangle, it still works still good. So that's a rule you can break or keep. And I think you're going to be just fine. All right. Next one is, what is the next one? All white, all white, all white, all white, all white, all white kitchens. Well, this is, so this is a kitchen trend, definitely not a rule by any means. Uh, white kitchens have been a trend for a long time. White kitchens tend to be one of the more popular choices for people, whether it's safer, whether it's just the most, uh, you know, it, it's, it's the thing that's out there the most in terms of if you go to Home Depot or any one of those stores to buy kitchens that are in stock, you're going to find white as a choice. And so white kitchens are definitely one of the better, not one of the better choices, but one of the more popular choices for a lot of consumers. I love white kitchens. It's no, you know, no secret that I love a white kitchen. I absolutely do. I have a white kitchen in my own home. In the last home, we had mostly white cabinets. And uh, so I just like white kitchens and that's just my personal preference. Um, but this is one of those trends that more and more people are looking to get away from. Now, the consumer reports and all the data show that white kitchens have been up to this point in time, the most, you know, popular kitchen of choice. Now, now, and that can be because of the few reasons that I mentioned already that because they're maybe this, the, the most gettable you know, they're, they're there, you can access them easy, or it's because, you know, maybe they look cleaner or they have that appearance of being brighter or in a small space, they tend to brighten up the room. There's all kinds of reasons why, or maybe just more people like them. I don't really know. What I do know is that up until this point in history, white kitchens have been, you know, as far as consumer reports go and what people are buying the most popular and they're projected to continue to be the most popular. However, I do know just from, being on YouTube and doing kitchen design and, and dealing with people and looking at comments and hearing comments from you that people are getting more and more tired of white kitchens and wanting to explore and do other things in their kitchen, which is awesome because I think there's so, so many different colors and ideas and, and ways to make your kitchen look amazing. It doesn't have to be just white. So all white kitchens are definitely something that I think I think we're going to see a turning point, even though the data says and the, you know, the statistics show that it's probably going to continue to be. I think we're going to see in the next little while just more and more people jumping off of that train and trying to incorporate other colors. Now, you might have still white elements in your kitchen, but there's so many colors out there. There's so many different ideas out there that, you know, we, we want to be able to have a little bit of our own creativity in the kitchen and and white seems to be kind of stark sometimes so that being said i still love a white kitchen i'll probably always love white kitchens but i love black kitchens as well i love wood tone you know here all white so the you, this is a wood tone wood tone is i don't know what this picture is that's ridiculous but wood tone has been becoming very popular wooden cabinets are becoming more and more popular back when i was coming into kitchen design people were jumping out of the wood and the natural woods and more and more into painted cabinets, more and more into white cabinets. And now I see that reversing where natural oak and natural maple and, and, and walnut and these different wood and wood tones and wood stains are becoming more popular again and more in the natural tones than in the, 
you know, the chocolate or the cappuccino color that was really popular for a while. Uh, not particularly those ones, but more of the natural wood tones becoming very, very popular. And they look amazing with white. And they look amazing with black cabins. They look amazing with blue and green, and whatever else that you choose. Uh, so there's lots of different colors up there. And of course, I know that some of you on here love a green kitchen. I see Barbara's here. Barbara loves her green kitchen. And I don't know what everyone else is into, but I know that there's lots of options out there. And so why not have a little bit of fun in the kitchen and not go with all white? So, you know, my kitchen's all white. I like it. It is what it is. But looking back, could it, it would I have done something different? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I think I would have liked to go some wood tone, actually. Some nice natural high gloss natural oak. That would be really cool. Anyway. Oh, I see uh, Susan saying matte, uh, matte black cabinets. That sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Darlene's here saying thumbs up when you come in the door. Appreciate it, of course. And uh, if I miss your comment along the way, I will try to get back to it as we go on here. I'll jump to the next one in a minute. Uh, and we'll just, uh, hey, Rob, Rob's here. Good to see you, buddy. I'm definitely keeping the triangle in my kitchen. Oh, back to the triangle, but decided to move the sink away from the window and maximize the usable counter space. Yeah, there's so much you can do. Moving the sink away from the window. Cool. Ah, opinions mixed. White and wood. Oh, opinion on mixed white and wood. Yeah, I love white and wood. Um, definitely. Definitely think it looks amazing. I did a few kitchens uh, recently where it was natural. Well, one particular kitchen recently. Um, natural maple with white. And it looks, it looks fantastic. It looks really, really nice. So I like it. I think wood mixes with everything. Um, and I think white mixes with a lot, pretty much everything too. So um, I, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those. All right, the next, so, you know, break the rule, break the trend. If, if you, you're like, you know, I don't want a white kitchen, don't definitely break the trend. But, you know, if you like a white kitchen, then bless you. The next one is this. Let's go. Rugs. What am I talking about rugs for? Um, let's talk about flooring first, and then we'll talk about rugs. You'll see where I'm going with this. And it brings up something interesting that happened to me at Ikea when I was there just not that long ago filming for an upcoming video um flooring in the kitchen has normally been a few different options whether it's linoleum or the you know the vinyl click flooring or even laminate flooring or hardwood flooring which is what i have now or ceramic tile or some kind of tile like those are the main ones you know there's other types out there but those are kind of the main ones and of course rugs are have been and are continue to be something that's very popular in interior design in the kitchen. Now, this isn't really a whole lot to do with kitchen design in terms of functionality, but I was at Ikea, and when I was there walking through one of their displays, I tripped on a rug that was in a kitchen display, and I thought, what? That's very dangerous, first of all, and even though they, they tried to tape it down because they do that in displays, but you're, you, you wouldn't necessarily do that in your kitchen. You're probably not going to tape the rug down or the mat down, and I, I tripped on one of those rugs and I thought, oh, interesting. Though in their displays, they're, they have a lot of different you know, options for the floor. I mean, they sell everything. So they, they have rugs and different types of, of runners and mats that they put out. And so I don't know, what's your thought? What do you think about rugs in a kitchen or mats or, or whatever? Um, I know that you can get the nice ones that you stand on, like in front of your sink. So that's one type, you know, those cushy ones, those rubbery cushy ones. And those can be very convenient just to help you if you're standing at your sink for any amount of time. But other than those type, like the ones that are just meant to be more design, you know, related or ones that are supposed to look a particular way, like maybe this rug here on the screen. I don't know if you'd put something like that in your kitchen necessarily, but, um, you know, one of these circle rugs would you <laughs> would you put a circle your circular rug in your kitchen i don't know but this is the this is the rug i tripped on at ikea so um you know and and they look it looked cool on the floor until i tripped over it i thought this is kind of a i wouldn't this is dangerous first of all because that's a slippery rug they have it taped down so i don't know you put it in the chat what's what's your opinion on having rugs in the kitchen but it's one of those design things, one of these trends that's very popular. And you can see it on Pinterest and on Instagram and all over the place. If you just, you know, look around a little bit, look on the floor. When you're looking at those kitchen pictures, you'll see a lot of kitchens have these runners and rugs 
And I think it's a rule that we can probably break. I, I don't know if I necessarily would like to have a rug or a runner in my kitchen, especially if I'm going to be tripping on it. I don't know about you, but like we have a lot of stuff that falls on the floor. <laughs> you know, I mean, just this is life. You got food bits on the floor, you got crumbs on the floor, you're cooking, you get. So that rug is just going to be a mess. I know you got the Dyson out there and you can put it on boost and just vacuum the goodness out of it. But it, how, I don't know if that's convenient or not. So rugs, no rugs, let me know. Maybe that should have been the, the post, the, the poll tonight on whether or not you should have a rug in your kitchen. Let's just see what you're all saying about it. Rugs look nice on Pinterest. Not for me. I would definitely trip. Yeah. Uh, it would be, it would get messy. There you go, right? Maybe the cushion mats. Yeah, the cushion mats, maybe, but uh, I don't know. I vote no on the rugs. Okay. All right. Good, good. I love the built in rug look using uh, a difference in tiles on the flooring. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think if, as long as it doesn't move and you don't trip on it, it could look nice. But I'm just, I just think about food bits and stuff like that getting on it. And of course, the fact that I tripped on it was like, ooh, wait a sec. Rugs sound as good as carpeting in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just carpet anywhere. I just, oh, carpet, oh, anyway. Yeah, I think you're right about that. So I think we're going to probably, we'll, 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 uh, we'll scrap the idea of the rug. I have an oriental runner in the middle of the kitchen with a pattern underneath it, and you love it. Okay, well, there you go. So everyone has a different approach. If it's working for you, <laughs> it's working. Darlene's not into the rugs at all, but Knitting Nana's saying she loves hers. So I think if it works, it works. And if it if it doesn't work, if you have the wrong kind of rug like this, uh, whatever you call those types of rugs, I don't I don't even know. Uh, I was going to call it rattan, but I don't think I don't think it's a rattan rug. Um, with burlap looks like burlap, I guess maybe that wouldn't be the way to go. So what about tile around the front of the cabinets, wood around the rest of the kitchen? Yeah, I think that, that's a good idea. I think there's lots of ways you can do flooring and um, tile around the front of the cabinets and wood around the rest. Depends on what the layout is maybe and how it fits and flows into the rest of the, the cabinets. But I'm, I'm pro like mixing up things. I think it can look really nice uh, overall. So, <laughs> wowzers well there you go pea green carpet nerd bathroom goes with the salmon pink sink tub and tile embossed wallpaper with roses that sounds delightful um I, that that carpet's probably pretty ripe though yeah trip rugs that's exactly what exactly what they were i tripped on it so all right let's go to the next one i think we're going to Go away from uh, the rugs, all right? Especially like that rug. I don't, I don't know why I picked. I don't know who has a circular rug in their kitchen, but I, you know, unless it's like you have a little table, a little bistro set, you put it underneath there. I don't know. Anyway, okay. What's the next one? Here we go. Oh, open or closed? Um, open concept versus closed concept. This is uh, something that we've been talking about in the kitchen design world for a long time. And years ago, the kitchen was its separate room and, you know, it was, it was off on its own. And then as time progressed, the kitchen opened up into the rest of the home to give you this open designed workflow, this open design concept. It's not really a concept. It's just a thing. It's, it's, it's open design kitchen. And so now the kind of trend is to say, or the thing that mo a lot of people are saying is let's, we want to close the kitchen off again or semi close it off. And that the open concept is sort of a thing of the past and something that we're kind of finished with. What do you think? I, I like the open concept look still, but am I just stuck in some old ways or do we need to put the kitchen behind closed doors once again? So the open concept, of course, the kitchen is open to the rest of the space, the living space. Maybe it's a living room or den or whatever, and it's just part of the whole environment. Now, I quite like this, but I can see the other side of the coin because 
when the hood is on or when you know cooking is happening or things are happening in the kitchen it's pretty noisy and everything else is happening right next to it and it's just competition for noise sometimes so i can see the benefit of having the kitchen in another room especially when it comes to cleaning up and making sure that everything is is put away and looking good in case someone comes over or someone comes to the door you know in our home basically the whole thing is open so if someone came to the door they're seeing everything so i can see the benefit of that and but i still like the idea of the open concept uh so as opposed to closed kitchen or closed off you know kitchen in another room like years ago when i'd go to my grandparents their kitchen was a kitchen and then sometimes you know they'd also have a table in there which it was like an you know basically an eat-in kitchen but that would lead to another room through a doorway and you know then you'd leave the kitchen you you couldn't see it anymore so you know i i grew up seeing a lot of closed kitchens i guess is the way to call them and over time have witnessed the birth of the open concept now in my home growing up it's kind of a mixture the kitchen was quite large and was an eating kitchen but it, it led to other rooms but i would say it's not an open wasn't an open concept kitchen it was definitely more of a you know a, a separate room and it still is a separate room that you know that has you know, maybe bigger doorways but it's definitely not open concept so you know this is the this is your kitchen you know, and right behind that door is bam, you just open it up and you have a separate kitchen. It's looking all beautiful, of course, because it's a picture on the internet and they all look beautiful. Um, but shut the door, walk away, company comes over, they don't have to deal with looking at anything. And I think that this might be a trend that we see maybe come back on the rise a little bit more. Now, one of the things that happens is uh, in new constructions, a lot of new constructed homes have this built into the floor plans because they've been so popular for such a long time. So I think with new builds, uh, the, the floor plans of those new builds is going to have to change to incorporate, you know, closed concept and everyone who's buying older homes, those older homes probably already had a kitchen that was closed off. And for instance, in this home that I'm in, which was my grandparents' home, uh, you know, years ago, the, the kitchen was this separate little room in the living room and the bathroom and the bedroom and the bedroom. And it was all separated. Well, we, when we finally came in here, we decided we just took every wall out and just gone. The whole thing's opened up. So if you're buying an older home, one like one like this that had a kitchen that was separated, you would have the option to say, well, maybe I want to make that open concept. And you might maybe not go down that road anymore. You might decide to keep it close so let's see what is your opinion and i'm probably missing a whole bunch but let's just go here um oh here we go uh good 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 uh what do you think about this new partition trend inspired by covid glass wall feature bear um and it's open and closed yeah i i don't know i I don't know. I don't not super. I'm not super fond of them, to be honest. Like, maybe, maybe Jackie. What do you think? Do you like them? Does what do you think of those? Do you, do you everyone know what Jackie's talking about? It's just like a instead of having a wall, it's a glass wall, basically a glass partition. I'm not sure about it personally. How I feel about them. I think if they're done right, maybe. But if you just want it closed, then just close it off. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Barb saying definitely likes it. I like open concept. I like being able to speak with my family while cooking. Yeah. Darlene's all about the closed. No rugs and closed for Darlene. So she knows what she wants for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm still quite a big fan of open. Um, yeah, I, I, that's a good question that Jackie brings up about those uh, partitions. I'm on the fence. I kind of said I didn't like them before in a trend video. But I have to like, I've never had one. I'd have to really investigate that. Well, here's a good point. More windows to clean. So that could be a way to look at it. Uh, Mavis, hey, Mavis, um, I would prefer a semi-open. Don't like being able to see the kitchen while sitting in the family room. That's one of the reasons why, well, I think, I don't know if it's the main reason, but you know, you had those raised lunch counter islands that aren't very popular anymore. I don't really like them anyway. 
But that was one of the things that people would say is would help hide, you know, the kitchen, especially if you had a sink in it, it just be because of the height of them. Um, that was one of the things that was uh, kind of mentioned about those. Hey, Lori, she's saying loves the open concept. It works for me personally. Yeah. Again, all of these things come down to what works for the person uh, in their home, what they prefer. So there's no right or wrong here. Any of these things are exactly this. It's what works for the person personally. And, um, but it's interesting to think about, is there a better option or, or not? I don't know. I don't know if you can really have that. I don't know if you could prove one or the other. So, but I agree. It, it, it works for me too. Dining room, living room, semi open for that together feel. So there you go. Darlene's still getting the togetherness, but just the kitchen is off on its own. All the smells are taken care of. Stacy is saying everyone is going to gravitate toward the kitchen. Uh, so might, might as well have more space. That's kind of true. It's definitely true where I'm at here. You know, everyone's, everyone, everyone just gravitates towards the kitchen. You kind of, but, but have we, have we made it that way because we've made it open concept? Would we have gravitated toward the kitchen if it's closed in another room? I don't know. Maybe still we would. Trying open concept for the first time, but our space is too small otherwise. Cool. I that's cool. I like I said, I just I love open concept, but Carol agrees with Sarah. And Jess is saying hi everyone. Hi, Jess. Great for you to be here. Rose is late, but you're here. Rooms are too small uh, in older houses have to open up. Right, exactly. Like this home I'm in, the main, like the whole house, like we added an addition, but the house that was here before was only like 625 square feet, like the one level. And that was five rooms, right? So every the kitchen was quite tiny. And to, to you know, so, you know, opening it up was kind of the, the way to go. So yeah, that's a really good point. Older homes, a lot of the rooms were too small. Barb saying it's too trendy. Is that open concept? I'm not sure. Um, love semi-open. The way you are always in the middle. You're, yeah, you're in the middle either way. There you go. It's like you can't you can't win or lose. It's good. What would constitute a semi-open kitchen? Um, probably what I would consider a semi-open kitchen would be where you have a wall with a, a pass through maybe. So it's not, it's not completely open. Like it would have a header, you know, almost like a window, but just a pass through. That's, that's what, that's what I would think of, or, you know, a bigger opening with maybe an Island in that opening between two spaces, but there's still walls um, or a doorway into that, that space. That's what I would, would think about. I mean, there's probably other ways to do that. But semi-open would be a, a pass-through that you can still see in. It's it's open, but it's not, you know, it's not wide open. The wall's still there. You're just modifying that wall to look in. So, uh, Phil, that's what I would think. That's what I would say in my mind would be a semi-open kitchen. Um, I ended up with a hybrid open-closed with my fridge in a block of floor to ceiling cabinets. Okay, so... Yeah, so there's some obstruction in the way, and um, so it's not completely open. Jeff's a fan. Open, show off the cabinets. That's a really good point uh, that Jeff brings up. You know, you you renovate your kitchen, you get beautiful new cabinets, and you want people to see them. You want them. You want them to look at them. So that's a, another good point. Hey, hey, Winston, can you from Atlanta? Cool. Glad that you're on tonight. Hey, good morning, Helen. <laughs> MTK Deers. Helen's on. She's so encouraging and she's watching from Australia, but it's tomorrow. So go figure out how that works. I don't know, but always glad that when you come on, Helen, thank you. I think that the glass partition makes the kitchen look like an office. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the fence, definitely. That's a good good way to put it, though. All right, lots of great comments coming in here. I'm going to keep going, and hopefully we'll get back to... Uh, I'll get back to these in a second. Uh, Barb's just saying, new builds here in the UK are trending to open space. Okay. 
Well, that's cool to know. Okay. You guys are great. You guys are killing it with the comments. I love it. And I'm going to jump back to these in a minute. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is cabinets hanging over a peninsula was nuts. Yeah. I, I don't know who you're agreeing with, but oh, here it is. Rose, my old kitchen. Oops, where'd it go? My old kitchen had a peninsula with cabinets hanging from the ceiling in the middle of the space. Crazy. So uh, as Stephen is saying, yeah, uh, it definitely is nuts. I've, I've so many kitchen renovations and uh, that I've done in the past where that was the case. So that would probably also con con constitute a semi-open kitchen where it's a U-shape with a, with a peninsula and hanging cabinets above Definitely something that was very popular back in the day. Our first home, in fact, had that. It was the first thing we tore out was all that hanging cabinets to get rid of it. And uh, yeah, so I think that was like kitchens were on their way to becoming open concept. And, and that was the thing that was that we were doing. I even actually did a few of those. I hate to admit it, but I did a few of those back way back in the very early 2000s. <laughs> when when i was working um so cool and helen saying in australia you rarely ever see a closed off kitchen cool that's cool to know okay let's go to the next one um how's our poll doing let's just check it out real quick where do you find the most inspiration for kitchen design and the results are so far youtube is 53 percent interesting i kind of would have thought maybe pinterest would be closer to the top but it's number two instagram is very low i thought actually instagram would be higher than that too but uh it's cool to know that youtube's on there okay let's go to the next one so we had open versus closed ah uh, microwaves mm. i know you'll have some opinions on this i know we talked about microwaves before and i know we had a poll about microwaves but i had to bring it up because i think and actually jeff uh, just did a video on his channel, Homestead uh, Studio Design, um, on, on microwaves. So you go check that out. Uh, he, he always does a really great job. So I personally am not a huge fan of microwaves, not just over-the-range microwaves, okay, but all microwaves. I'm just not a huge fan. They have to fit somewhere. I think they're an eyesore. I don't know. It, maybe I don't think I... I I don't think my opinion's going to change. Jackie's saying she has an opinion. We know, we know, we know. Um, but not just o OTRs, but just microwaves in general. So what do you think? Is it time that we break the rule and just get rid of the microwave? Do we really, really, really need them? Some of you have already said yes. You reheat food a lot. You use your microwave a lot. And then, so that's, that's good. But, you know, I'm trying to think like when, there's going to be a day, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. There's going to be a day when the microwave has become a thing of the past. You know, maybe my kids' kids will look back and be like, what is this? What's this, Grampy? <laughs> that was in your kitchen. And I'll be like, that's a microwave. Uh, they used to reheat food and be like, whoa, weird. Um, it looks so ridiculous. So maybe that'll be a thing uh, in the future. <laughs> and, uh, maybe not. Maybe it'll be even more popular. I don't know. But I, what do you think about microwaves? My opinion is let's finally just get rid of them and, and forget about it. Don't hate me. I know that you some of you love your microwaves, and that's all good. So this is a rule. Um, and in most kitchens, I have... <laughs> uh, I just... I don't know. What are we going to do? So, aside from reheating some reheating food, which I don't know if you definitely necessarily need a microwave to do that. Aside from reheating, <laughs> I just I just don't I just buy it already popped. I don't need to do I don't need to pop popcorn. That stuff in the bag that's that's not good for you. <laughs> so I don't bother with that stuff. Um, reheating coffee, which. Um, Amy said that for Father's Day, I should buy one of those ember mugs. So I'm actually going to order one of those. It's the mug that continues to be warm all the time. Air fryers are really popular. Toaster ovens are actually really popular. Um, what? Toaster ovens? I'm telling you, they are. I don't have one, but I, they're, they're very popular. Microwaves to me, I think it's like that one appliance that's like, why? Why do we have to dedicate a cabinet for this or space for this 
why does it have to be so massive? Why does it, you know, why? It's time to get rid of the microwave. <laughs> um, that being said, I have a microwave. I put one in our island. I, I think they look... I just don't think they look the nicest. I, you know, anyway, that's just my opinion and everyone has their own opinion, but you know, I have opinions on lots of things, kitchen design related that other people don't. So um, I don't know how you're going to cook your popcorn anymore if you didn't have it. And uh, I, I cook rice in my microwave. That'd be one of the things that we'd use it for. One of the only things really um, that we use it for. So, but Carol likes the convenience of reheating in the microwave, but haven't uh, had one since moving and really don't miss it. There you go, right? It's like one of those things that if you just try it, I think you'll be okay. Like I think you'll make it if you don't have a microwave. I think. Maybe not, but I think. I used to speed up long cooking processes, melting chocolate butter and heating sauces. So, you know, you're using it, you're using it. Um, Lori saying I'd get, I would get rid of my microwave too. Sarah saying we don't use them. I just see more and more people saying that they're not using microwaves as much as they used to. So if that's you, I suggest try it out. Get rid of the microwave, especially if it's a if it's a countertop one, not that big a deal because, you know, you plug it in. If you don't want to use it, get rid of it. Regain your countertop space back. No big deal. But if you're dedicating a cabinet to it um, or, you know, you have it above your range or wherever you have it, think about maybe not doing it. I don't know. Will I get in trouble with the the rulers of kitchen design? Maybe. All right, let's go on to the next one. I see lots of lots of comments here um, about the microwaves. This isn't one of those touchy topics, you know, especially on my live stream. Whenever I bring up microwaves, it's like, here we go. <laughs> Saddle up. All right, the next one is less is more. Um, one of the current trends, of course, is minimalistic design and whether or not you want to invest in having, you know, this kind of design or not, whether you, you can get away with it. So we've talked before about like no wall cabinets or minimal wall cabinets. And there's, there's a lot of opinion on that. And everyone, every, everything comes down to how you use the space. Um, but sometimes you don't know until you, you, you know, you try it or you do it or you experience it. So less is more. What is your opinion? What do you think? Now, one of the current trends, of course, is, you know, this minimalistic design style, whether it's not, not necessarily a Japandi or any of those, because you can have a lot of cabinets and have a Japandi style. But this, this minimalistic approach to less wall cabinets, more open space, breathable, you know, fridge on a wall with no cabinets around it or above it, just just a fridge. So there's a lot of different ways that we can design a kitchen just to, to let it breathe, let it be more open and not just jammed with cabinets. Now, you know, when you design a kitchen normally, when I design a kitchen normally, it's like, let's just put as many cabinets as possible in this thing because that's that's what you do, right? But maybe it's not what we need to do. Maybe we can think about it in a different way. As long as you have storage you need, as long as you have, you know, the, the functionality that you need for the kitchen and it's workable for you, then, you know, that's one thing. But how many cabinets is too many cabinets and what can you get away with not having something to think about? So so you have less is more and you got more is more basically or, you know, so here's just a, a not a minimalistic, this is a maximalistic uh, kitchen here. We're just, just stuff everywhere and everything's kind of cluttered. Um, but those are some pretty green cabinets, uh, if I, if I do say so. And so this is something to think about. Can we break this rule? Do we need to, I, I, can we break either of these rules? I guess is less is more important or do we need, do we need to follow that trend or can we get away in the middle somewhere? More is more. Is that something we should be looking at? More is more. I don't even know what that means. But you know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's these two sides of the coin. And I think most kitchens nowadays are somewhere in between that, of course. You know, lots of cabinets, it's functional, it's, it, it works for the person. There's lots of storage, everything's accessible. That's kind of the dream. Um, but yeah, there's this, been this turning point, this trend around just making the kitchen a little more breathable. 
But is it just a trend? Is it just so that we can say, you know, my kitchen is open and breathable and whatever? Or it's like, well, you don't have any storage. So maybe it shouldn't be. I don't know. Because sometimes I think there's these trends that just don't make sense. But because it's trendy, you know, we're, we're supposed to like follow down that road. So I just, I'm not for that. I'm not against not having wall cabinets. In fact, I think it's a really good idea not to have wall cabinets if you don't need them, if you can get used to having things in different areas and that it, it is open, but not for the sake of just doing it because it's a trend. I think it has to work for the individual. So if that makes sense. So that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm sticking to there. So um, let's just jump to the comments. Lots of comments coming in. So I really appreciate it. Uh, it, it this is what it's all about. So uh, I don't even know where to start here, but I'm going to keep going. Oh, we don't, I got a comment up there. I forgot. Yeah, a lot. I mean, hey, Darlene saying loves it. Depends on how you cook. Oh, I think that's microwaves. Back to microwaves. I'll have to get you a shirt. I'm going to design you a shirt that says that, uh, Jackie. Email me your mailing address and I'll send that out to you. <laughs> I could do uh, the less is more. But that's just me. Yeah, see, it's all, it's all, everyone's so different. It's nearly 1 a.m. and I have to go to sleep. Wow, cool. Really appreciate you being on that late. Sorry that, sorry that there's time zones, you know, but thanks, Barb's. Um, less 15 inch base cabinets. Uh, Steve, what do you mean? Tell me what you mean on that one. And, Let's keep going, but tell me what you mean. Ha, ah, yeah, right. The second the crew moved my butcher block onto the island, it was covered with crap. <laughs> Not even done, and it's covered. There you go. Doesn't take long for that clutter to come up. Uh, <laughs> for me, it is function first. So function over form. Yes, preaching to the choir for my space. Currently removed pegboards and building a small walk-in pantry. Cool. Um, that's awesome. Walk-in pantries are great. Good point, Darlene. Less does not mean cheap or shortcut. It means design with intention and functionality along with pleasing aesthetic. Wow. That is good copy right there. I might steal this and put it in something. It's very, it's very good. <laughs> Thanks, Darlene. I'm just trying to have less stuff. That seems to be kind of the the, the trend it too is just less um, clutter overall, um, and I, I I agree a lot of people are going that route, uh, Barb, because uh, we just get so much things everywhere. You, you open up your cabinets, if you open up your cabinets and there's just it's just filled with stuff that you never use. It's time to get rid of that stuff. It's one of my one of my favorite um, you know kitchen design tips is is just declutter. Like it's so simple. It doesn't cost any money necessarily declutter, clean it up. And instantly it's just refreshed and you don't have to do a whole lot other than just get rid of a bunch of stuff you don't use. So agree on less is more in terms of decluttering a space to make it more spacious and functional. How many storage containers, measuring cups, extra plates do you need? Right. So like what Barbara was saying uh, and Jackie, yeah, I mean, seriously, how much stuff do we need? Unless you use it all, it's all good, or you like it and you want it, then hey, what's the difference? Go for it. But if you're trying to, you know, go that route, decluttering is a good way to do it. I have cupboards so that I don't have visual clutter. Well, there you go. Everything's behind nice, pretty doors. No one sees it. So if you had open shelving or you didn't have those cabinets, all that stuff would have to be somewhere. So there's a reason to have more instead of less my new kitchen no upper wall cabinets ah i like the sound of that first thing to go when i purchased my home and started to demolish old kitchen and uh, the nib walls cool that's definitely a trend that's coming up and i i like the idea i think uh i think it's going to be something I, I it has to be something that works for the individual and works for the kitchen definitely don't do it as a trend factor don't be like oh, i'm going to go with the no wall cabinets because it's just so awesome looking it has to definitely work for you. And if it, if it works, that's awesome. So just switch to induction. 
good way to get rid of old pots and pans. Yes, because apparently you need a particular type of pan, which I learned here in the live stream a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, induction seems to be kind of cool. People like it, people don't, but it's uh, it's more trendy, more trending now for sure. Here's this might be something to think about. Everyone in my family is very tall, so we could more easily forgo the base cabinets. <sighs> you know, my wheels are turning now. I think that would be, I think this would make a great video for the future, like Mark's, you know, prediction for future trends. No base cabinets, no countertops, nothing, just wall cabinets everywhere. Um, Maybe it, then maybe that could work. I like it, but it's true. If you're tall, bending down into a drawer is going to be a nuisance. So maybe having more storage in the upper section is better. I love the fact that um, you know every kitchen design is different because every person is different. How they use the kitchen is so different. So there's no like one way. This is how you do it. There's guidelines, and within that, make it work. So I love that. I'm hoping to have tall pull-up pantries and lots of drawers and a shallow walk-in pantry will increase the functionality of my space. Love the word shallow. Absolutely love shallow storage. I'm doing a couple videos talking about it coming up. Um, it was what I was at Ikea looking at. I love shallow, shallow storage, shallow pantries, shallow options because everything's so accessible. So be on the lookout for that. That's, that's going to be happening soon. All the mix and bowls and the silverware, they got to go. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Susan, my recent kitchen remodel forced me to declutter and I love it. Yeah, always feels good to get rid of just stuff, right? Got rid of things I thought I to have, had to have, but never used, and I don't miss any of that stuff. It is a good feeling to get rid of all that stuff, and so good for you. That's awesome. Um, I We too, we, you know pretty regularly go through and, and just clean out things that we don't need, don't use, haven't used. So uh, I think that's, like I said, my, one of my first tips in making your kitchen more functional is to first declutter it before you do anything else. And uh, just by doing that, you'll notice a huge difference. Steven is saying, we have space for much needed wall cabinets, but don't need the extra counter space thinking about using a 15 inch base cabinets on that wall. We have, okay, 15 inch. Oh, I see what you're saying. Are they, are they on the floor or are they just shallow base cabinets? Um, yeah, I think that works. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing they're going to be on the floor because I, I highly doubt you'd mount base cabinets on the wall if they're 15 inch deep because you could just mount a 15 inch wall cabinet there. So never mind. My brain doesn't work right now. Uh, yeah, I like I said, I love shallow options. So if you have that option to do a 15-inch base, it sounds like you're using maybe Ikea um, or something like that. They have a 15-inch deep base cabinet. And um, it's definitely something that you should think about. I agree. If you're uh, yeah, on the floor, okay. If you're using, um, if you don't have the, the, the depth for that. And also one of the other things, now maybe you, you can't do this with Stephen, but or maybe you can, you can, you know, you can create like a, a shallow pantry unit just using, yeah, and it's Ikea. Okay. So, um, cause they, they have 15 inch depth. Uh, most other places don't, but you can just take a wall cabinet as well and put that on top of it. And, uh, and then another one, um, on top of that, just to create like the shallow depth pantry. But yeah, I'm all for that idea for sure. I think if you have the space for it and for something shallow, go for it. Um, I'm all for it. It's one of my tips coming up in my next video coming out on Saturday. I'm talking about stock cabinets and some of the th tricks that I've used in the past in clients' kitchens to, you know, design a functional kitchen using stock cabinets. And that's one of the things I would do quite regularly is take shallow or either shallow depth base cabinets. But if they don't have that in the stock program, just to take a wall cabinet, cabinet, build it up uh, to base height and, and use it as a shallow depth base cabinet. So, yeah. Good idea. I like it. All I remember about ceramic cooktops, okay, is that it was a pain to clean. That was ages ago. There, they are a pain to clean. I, I don't know. Um, 
some of that oxygen boost stuff, you know, that white oxygen boost powder really gets them clean, but, and a good old magic eraser never hurt either. I've had my glass top now for one week and so far I'm pleased. I skipped the induction, but went for a 36 inch. Ooh, nice. And it's much better than the old GE glass stove top. Awesome. New is always nice, eh? New is uh, so nice when they're new. Uh, we have an, a ceramic tile, ceramic top rather, uh, range and we like it, but it does get kind of, you know, not, I guess it's stained hard to, hard to clean. But, uh, like I said, that, that oxygen boost powder stuff, put it on there and let it, let it soak up, gets, gets all kinds of stuff off. That was the last of them. I don't think I had any more, um, in terms of. Yeah, so that was the last of the slides that I had. So, so there's, there's, like I said, there's lots of rules in kitchen design, and there's lots of, well, there are rules. You know, there's lots of ideas that we we abide by, but they're not necessarily need to be followed. I think the the most important thing in any kitchen design, like I said, is that it's functional, that it works for the person who's using that kitchen for the time that they're going to be using that kitchen, unless you're flipping a home or you're doing something like that, where you're doing it so that someone else is going to be using it, then you would think about it in, in a little different terms. But when you're designing your own kitchen, it's important that you think about that. And of course we talk about it before and I talk about it a lot um, that it's important to really look through all the, all the, you know, when you have a design, you have a layout, you look through that to figure out how, how is this going to be used so that uh, it's functional for me. And, and don't, don't neglect that process. Don't think it's just going to happen because it's, it's not, it, you'll definitely end up with a kitchen. You're like, well, where, where does this go? Like I have this particular thing and I didn't think about it and it's too big to fit here and it's too small to fit here. So that's a really important tip is that you, you really think and plan through that process. Don't leave it up to a designer. You know, if I was designing a kitchen, don't leave it up to me because I don't know, I don't know what you have in terms of what you're using and you have to really think through that process and then work with your designer to get uh, the cabinets in the particular layout that you want. So you need to definitely be spearheading that, you know, design and making sure that you're getting exactly what you need. So, and, um, Hey, Will your new video have suggestions for shallow pantry organization? My husband thinks I'm crazy for hoarding a 12 inch deep pantry. I'm telling you, that's a great idea. That's a great idea for a video, but a 12 inch pantry. I know it, it, it sounds like it. I understand. It's so accessible. It's, you don't need pullouts. Everything's right there. You're not reaching like on the bottom of a pantry. If you don't have a pullout, you, you have to, you know, you're reaching in with this. You don't, everything is just very accessible. I think I know you're, I know it's not as deep. So obviously there's not as much cubic, you know, inches of space that you're using. However, the space that is there is very accessible and functional. I, I love shallow storage. Now um, for, for organization, I, I haven't put together the video at all. All I did so far was film at Ikea However, I will um, probably try and, you know, put in some ideas for organization, but just on, on the fact that it's so accessible, so easy to get at, I just love shallow storage options. I don't know why I'm just on this kick right now with shallow storage, but I am. So thumbs up for you for ordering that. Um, dear husband, it's going to be okay. You're not crazy. I'm telling you, it's going to be great. They're especially great if you don't have room for full depth, but you do have room for a shallow depth. Like, why not go for it? I think it's good. I'm thinking of shallow base cabinets under a mounted or a wall mounted bakery rack. Yeah. Sarah, that's a good idea, right? Uh, that would definitely work. For sure. It doesn't work in my late 70s home unless a massive reconstruction it wasn't my budget. You're replying to Rose. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So, okay. <laughs> my, my, my mistake. Uh, let's see. All right, you guys are replying. Yeah, so I think that it's a really great uh, option to go with shallow storage. I love it. 
And, um, oh, Jack is asking how the poll's going. We'll check that here in a second. Um, but definitely, I'm, I'm all for it. Go for it. The poll is saying YouTube is 49%. So YouTube's in the lead as far as where do you get the most inspiration for kitchen design. And I guess, you know, I guess that's because you're watching uh, Mark Tobin Kitchen Design, getting all that inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't let leave that one go. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. So after that's Pinterest 29%. I I would say for me probably Pinterest would be one of the more things that I would visit for inspiration, I guess. Um and Instagram, I uh kitchens of Instagram and stuff come up in my feed all the time. Uh really really cool designs there, so <laughs> that was a selfless plug <laughs> but thanks for watching um what kind of floors do i have i have hardwood just uh straight up sort of regular regular hardwood yep uh they go underneath my island and then they stop at my base cabinets and have my base cabinets built up with plywood underneath and then uh, my toe kit comes down over uh the flooring so that it all looks seamless uh, we wanted plywood, and that's so we did it. I uh, don't have a problem with it at all. Scratched it the night we moved in. Just life. So had engineered hardwood in the past. Had um, you know the thick linoleum uh, floor in the past, and had uh, laminate flooring in the past. And uh, you know they're, they're all whatever. They're all good, but we just wanted hardwood floor. So that's what I have in mind. Yeah. Magazines of Burns and Nobles. Yeah. Uh, Noble is what I look for at builds. Yeah. Magazines. We don't look at those very often anymore. So very cool. Listen, I'm going to take off because, you know, this is the first, uh, well, the second day of summer. And uh, today was uh, Amy's, my wife's, um, first day of vacation. So she's on summer vacation and uh, we're going to go soak in the hot tub. So I'm going to go. And I really appreciate everybody being on this Saturday's video, of course, talking about stock cabinets, ways that you can make them as functional as possible. And um, so you can check that out. Um, what else do I want to say before I go? I really appreciate everybody being on and wherever you're watching from. If I didn't catch your comment or your 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 uh, chat, my my apologies, but I really appreciate all the chat that happens, and, and this, is the, this is a really great community. If you're looking for a measurement guide to measure your kitchen, there's one in the description uh, that you can download. Now, I will give you this disclaimer, because you're on this community, is that it goes to a mailing list, and I'm going to start mailing out regularly to that mailing list, just um, different things that I find on the internet to do with kitchen design or maybe stuff about the channel or, you know, things related to kitchens or in the future, um, I'll probably have, I'm trying to develop a course on kitchen design. So that'll be something that I tell people about on that email list. If you hate getting emails and you, you just can't stand that, just unsubscribe from them uh, so that I don't bother you. But just so you know, if you do download that, that's, you know, you go on a mailing list. So I want to be kind of be out in the open there that's that's what happens but it is a free completely free guide and um one of the one of the benefits of measuring your kitchen correctly is that at the end of the day you will have a much better uh sorry you'll have a much better um design experience when things go right at the start so if you're measuring your kitchen properly it's it's uh, it's there for you so i want to appreciate it everybody have a great night and definitely come back next week. We will be here chatting about kitchens again, having a great time. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week.